Welcome to Canny Cross Conversations with me, Michelle. And me, Louise, talking all things dogs, running and canny sports. This episode is sponsored by the Get Stronger Run a Faster 5K course. It's great for canny crossers and runners to improve their 5K time and keep up with their dogs. Hello, welcome to this episode of Canny Cross Conversations. Today we have a Canny Cross story for you and we're joined by Beth from explorewithpaws.uk um, and she's here to tell us all about her Canny Cross story. So Beth, hiya, thanks for joining us. Do you want to just hiya. introduce yourself and your dogs? Hiya, um, so I'm Beth and thank you for having me on. I feel very privileged. <laughs> um, I've been following the podcast for quite some time. So yeah, um, I've got three dogs. Uh, I've got Neville, a he's turning nine, we think, a Romanian rescue dog. We've got Luna, who's five, turning six, I believe now. So she's an English spring spaniel. And then our most recent addition is Lily, a sprinter so she's 15 months old and she is a English Springer Spaniel cross German short head pointer oh so nice crazy two high drive like breeds together <laughs> so yeah a really good caddy cross dog really and yeah. well sure you're a, a vet nurse is that right yeah yeah so I've been a vet nurse for coming up to probably 10-ish years now um been qualified nearly 10 years which is really quite scary how time flies <laughs> yeah it does I'm afraid doesn't it yeah so yeah. how did you get into canny cross and well I think I know the why but how did you get into canny cross um I mean well I was always already running um I started when I was at uni just for fitness so I was like oh running's a really cheap way to you know keep fit um, little did I know how much trainers cost and then you get into all the races and everything um, but I did find it was a lot more like it was quite a benefit to my mental health as well at the time which I didn't realize until I'd kind of gone down and I, I'd been running for a little while um, and then once I qualified um, and left uni I got Neville pretty much within about two months of moving out of <laughs> my parents house um, so I got him in 2016 and literally the first day I had him I'd just done a night shift I picked him up the day before I'd done a night shift got home and we went straight to park run because it was on a Saturday morning <laughs> so yeah and I think from then we used to run together quite a bit but it wasn't what I would call canny cross it was like with the waist belts um with a little bit of bungee on it um which was fine for Neville because he was such a good boy and would just trot pretty much next to me unless everyone's shouting go 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 at the end and he'll race across the the finish line um so yeah it wasn't really till I had Luna that I got into canny cross um because obviously being a crazy springer spaniel she had so much pull I just physically couldn't have her on like the little tiny waist belt so mm -hmm. That's where I kind of Googled and found Canny Cross, found Shropshire Canny Cross uh, Facebook group as well. Um, but then I didn't really join in with any of that. I think it took me a, a good kind of year or two to actually join one of their social runs and then really get into Canny Cross. So. Had you seen at Park Run people running with the Canny Cross kit or not? No, no, they were all like the little waist belts or people were running with like hand leads, handheld yeah. leads. So I hadn't really seen anyone with proper, like, waist canny cross belts. Um, so, yeah, it did take quite a bit of Googling to find something that was not going to pull on my back. And, yeah, the first time I did part run with her and my back absolutely ached afterwards. More reason to do Pilates, you see, for everyone yeah. out there. <laughs> yeah. I'll just get that one in there. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because I've been out canny crossing today with with a sprocker and she was oh my god she was like way ahead of us she, they just love it don't they I don't know what it is about the breed but they just love to run yeah they're just she's such a natural like you just yeah. I didn't need to teach her anything like she just pulled straight away um 
yeah, it was just the left and right commands and we were away. They're yeah. not very big, are they? They're not very, they're the smaller of the springers, aren't they? Not yeah, the she's one. like 15 kilos. So she's quite, she's quite dinky for a springer, really. Um, but do you get the pull with the speed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's fast. Like, she's definitely a, it, I, I'm definitely the weak link. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I definitely hold her back. She she could run so much faster without me. I think they all do, actually. They all, uh, all would, wouldn't they? Um, yeah, yeah. So what kit do you use with um, Luna then? Um, so Luna has the uh, non-stop free motion harness. And then I use like the dog fit line and the non-stop harness for myself. And then Lily, she's a bit of a lighter puller. Like, she'll still pull, but she's only 13 kilos. So she's quite a nice, gentle pull. She's definitely more of a long-distance dog. Um, yeah, so I use the dog fit harness for her, uh, which is doing fine at the moment. It's lasted her, so, yeah. And you, you've recently done um, a half marathon. So who did you do that with? So that was with Luna. Um, I feel at the moment... Lily's still quite young to be doing the distance, although she is, she has come on kind of 11 mile runs with me before and been absolutely fine. She's been free running them and has way loads of, like loads more energy at the end of what I do. <laughs> and she's probably done like twice the distance. Um, so yeah, so Luna does like, is the plan to have Luna as doing the ultra as well. But does she, because I, I always think about doing those, because I don't know about um, Poppy Michelle, but Pickle takes off. At the beginning of a race and I 5k 10k is is sort of probably her limit because she won't steady down that quickly so just if you if um Lily Luna I've got confused Luna. <laughs> Luna. <laughs> you both begin with Al it's confusing I know you don't make it easy for us um so it, it, if she pulls straight away do you does she settle into a pace quite easy to do the long distances or not yeah, I think because we have like the set routes of like, this is our like 5k route, this is our like 10k route. And then we've got like a bit of a longer route. She, I think she knows when we turn off, she's like, all oh, right, we're doing a longer run today. Um, and she will just settle down into a nice pace. Like she'll still pull a little bit. Obviously, I mean, if she sees a squirrel, we're absolutely doomed. Um, <laughs> she's still got a pull for that. But she'll settle into like a nice pace and you can just kind of cruise along with her. Um, Whereas, like, I don't know, it was just like she knew at the half marathon that we were doing a race and she was like, we were doing the half marathon because she didn't pull from like at all. She was just, it was like a nice gentle pull from the very start. Whereas normally it's like race down the first bit and then settle in. So, was, was the start for the half marathon less, less, a low, lower key than maybe a, the races I sort of tend to go to, which are just sort of full on. I mean, it was a mass start, but it was a very well controlled mass start. So, I mean, we started pretty much at the back, um, me and my friend, and we kind of let other people kind of go first. And then we went and we just kind of slowly picked our way through until we settled. And it spaced out pretty quickly, really. Uh, everyone was really sensible, but I was a little bit worried with it being a mass start and it's down like this single track road to start with and then up a little footpath like how the other dogs would react and how Luna can react because she can sometimes be a little bit reactive when we're just walking on a lead um, and she sees other dogs she can be a bit barky but when she's running and she's canny crossing she's fo so focused that she just wasn't bothered at all about any of the other dogs and there was none of the other dogs were bothered with it. everyone was just so focused on like we're running we're you know we're doing our job so that was really nice and but, did you yeah. go on sorry Michelle I was gonna say was that like the first experience of a race or have you done other races before with Luna I've done, yeah I've done a half marathon not half marathon sorry I did a 10k in uh was it about I think it was like October 22 I did Thorsby Lee kick um which had like a canny cross bit at the start um so I did 10k there and that was all it was that was a bit crazy even though they set everybody off in twos everybody was queuing at the start so the dogs were like really riling themselves up and they were barking and it was really loud you just couldn't hear yourself think at all at that one 
Um, so I was kind of expecting it, to, expecting it to be like that for the uh, Canny Trail Ultra, um, Canny Trail Half, but it it wasn't. It was pretty calm <laughs> in terms of a Canny Cross race start. That sounds good because I all the races I, I did a mass start a couple of weeks ago locally down here, and it was the first one we'd done, and I was in totally the wrong place because I didn't. Yeah. Well, I didn't realise Pippa was going to be on it as she was. Um, but it is quite, if you've got a strong pulling dog that knows how to race, it's, um, yeah, it's quite interesting trying to pick your way through people, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the 10K, because it, you could you could go fast, you know, you're not having to pace yourself of like we're doing, you know, 13 miles. It was like, right, we are on it from the very start and we're just going to go for it. So that was very much like we were picking people off um even though we kind of started towards they'd put it in like timed like if you're gonna if you're aiming for like an hour or an hour and five minutes and things like that so they they'd put people where they thought they'd be but I was still ended up picking people off so yeah. so you ran did you run run there put my teeth in did you run the whole of the uh, 10k that uh, half marathon yeah. sorry pretty much we walked up like the steep inclines but the mo the rest of it we we ran it but it was just we met we met up with somebody else and because she was running solo and we were just chatting the whole time like it was very relaxed very like it was just like being on a train and run to be fair and we were just having a good time because we were like we're not doing it for a time because the elevation was absolutely crazy so we weren't expecting anything yeah. It was just, we're just going to go and have, you know, have a girly weekend and have fun. <laughs> and will, so in the ultra, because you'll have to run and walk in the ultra, won't you? But will the, will the dog cope with that? Or Yeah, I, I think, you know, we've got up to 16 miles so far and Luna's coped pretty well. So I think she'll be absolutely fine. Um, again, we've done bits where, because where I live, we have the Recon, which is, quite a big hill <laughs> and so that's like our training ground and um, so we do walk like sections up there just because there's no way I could run the whole thing <laughs> so yeah we run up the uh, run down the inclines and then walk up um other way around walk up the inclines run down yeah. the declines <laughs> how is she on the downhills out of interest because Pat um, likes to pull a lot on the downhills, and that can be tra quite tricky. Yeah, Luna's not great on the downhills because I think she's just like, right, we can run again, let's go. Um, so normally it is pretty much a, with me, you stay with me by my side, um, which can be a bit of a 50 50 as to whether or not she will. Um, like at the weekend, we obviously the the ground is terrible at the moment it's you can't get a grip anywhere and we were going to downhill and she saw a squirrel and there was no way I was going to stop her and I just skidded um kind of into the bend and managed to grab hold of a tree just to stop myself because I was just like there's just no way like she's got such a high prey drive that when she sees a squirrel that's it um if I'm not on solid ground <laughs> uh, but during the half um during the half marathon she was so good she tried by my side the whole time like when we were going downhill she was you know if she did have a pull it was very gentle so I, which I was really impressed with I was almost surprised me that she did that did she planned for the rest of training for the ultra then when is it when's the when, when uh, is so it's the 23rd of March mm. um so we've got I think six weeks now not far we've got another couple of long runs to do so mm. my training plan takes me up to 22 miles and then a 20 miler and then we start the taper it's becoming real now yeah and how's have you thought about fueling and things on the ultra how yeah so I use tailwind which I used for the London marathon which I did last year and I just found it just worked so well then um fueled with jelly babies as well oh don't like so, jelly babies. <laughs> yeah, love a jelly baby, and that's almost like a reward for me. I'm like, right, come on, you're gonna get to this mile, and then you're gonna you have a jelly baby, or you're gonna get to the top of this hill, and then you're gonna have a jelly baby. So it almost gives me like a bit of a focus on that. Um, and then Luna, I, they have like you know the Skinners, um, energy bars. So they'll have that. I kind of give them like a little chunk 
probably like every five miles. I don't, I don't know if that's too much, but they seem okay with it. I know a lot of people say you shouldn't really feed them when they're doing long runs just because of their digestion. But I've, I suppose it depends on the dog, really. Like my girls have never had a problem. So it's there. It's interesting. Do you do you ever ask your vets, you know, where you work about fueling on a on a run or anything like that? No, I mean, none of them kind of deal much with kind of sports dogs. Um, apart from mine <laughs> so um, they don't have that much kind of information in terms of like fueling for like I suppose you say athletes for yeah. the athlete athlete dog um, it's not really something that they know um, I'm part of a really good Facebook group actually um, which is called sports dog nutrition and yeah, I can't it's run by Holly. I can't remember what her name is now, like her full name. Um, but no, she's like top of like the sports dog nutrition and she deals a lot with kind of canny cross and agility dogs. So she's got a few things on there for like kind of homemade energy bombs and things like that. So that's it. That's, uh, I might go and have a look at that. That's interesting to see because I'm walking the Southwest Coast Bus, so we do same sort of mileage that's obviously not as fast but we've still got the elevation and stuff I I um I give pickled bananas and stuff like that yeah um, you just feel like I'm having fuel so you must need something as well I think that's probably us just humanizing them but and, and that's what I think as well I'm, I'm yeah. a bit, you have a bit of my banana <laughs> she yeah. likes it so <laughs> you just touched on agility there you do agility with uh both your dogs or all of your dogs uh, so Neville's definitely retired now. He did a little bit, but he's not definitely not competing in agility. Um, so yeah, I do it with um, Luna and Lily. Uh, Luna is grade three. Hopefully this year we'll be going grade four. We just need one more win. Um, and Lily hasn't started uh, competing yet because she's too young. But yeah, she's training and she's she's doing all right. She's definitely a bit of an overthinker, I think. I do a little bit with uh, Pickle, but just to keep her active rather than... Uh, I, I don't want to get into another competitive thing, otherwise I won't have a life. Yeah, you can go really full in on the agility side. and Yeah, I definitely have. Came <laughs> okay, first, was it agility or canny crafts? Um, I think it was probably agility, to be fair. Um, I started... I think L Luna must have been about eight months. I'd always wanted to do agility, like ever since I'd seen it at Crafts and I was like this just looks so fun um so I wanted to do it at Neville and we did it when we got Luna I was like yes she's an English Springer Spaniel she's got so much energy she's so intelligent like she needs to do something so yeah eight months old I'm pretty sure we started agility with her and we just kind of started with like flat work like all the groundwork um to start with um and then I don't think I started running with Luna properly until she was about a year, just over a year. So agility definitely came first. Yeah, because they can do quite a lot, can't they? Because they can have the um, the jumps and stuff really low, can't they? So they're just literally stepping over them. Yeah, and you're teaching all the commands as well to yeah. start with. So like all your lefts and rights, like your directional terms. So I think that really helped. Like she already knew left and right when we started Canny Cross, so it was just such a simple like transition, transition for it. Yeah, and uh, and it's interesting. It'll be interesting when we go back, um, which we're starting again in March. I was going to do another one in March um, to see how she remembers it and if it does help the Canny Cross a bit more. But we did it obviously the other way around. So um, yeah, no, it is. I I actually really enjoy it. It's hard work. It's fast, but it's fast with pickle. I know. Yeah. I your videos the other day and I was like you're going for it as well <laughs> yeah Luna is absolutely crazy fast uh, and she's got so much drive I can just send her and she'll go whereas Lily is I think just because of her age like she's still really young she's you know she's a baby dog really still I'm really having to kind of keep the enthusiasm with her so I'm more out of breath running her I think because I'm having to really talk to her encourage her to keep going and rewarding her for when she does something right so if I've asked her to turn right and she she's right I'm like yes good girl let's go keep going and I'm there going oh my god keep going keep going <laughs> run as fast as you can 
I was just impressed how you remember the course because that's usually my problem because you go over the jumps sort of different ways, don't you? I'm like, oh, I can't yeah. cope with all this. I think I, I think, over. I think I overthink it. Yeah, I think you get used to it. Like to start with, I used to think, yeah, you you'd start with kind of doing like three or four obstacles at a time, and I'd be like, I don't know how I could man like manage to remember a full course and of like twenty obstacles, and now I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. I can do that. <laughs> you've not tried it have you michelle i've not tried it no i should find a local one because i think poppy might actually enjoy it you know i think yeah. she would it's brain training as well isn't it yeah it's being active yeah which is why i tend to do it in the summer to keep mm. pickle active um, yeah. but do you do it all year round with the dogs yeah. so you do both at the same time yeah so at the moment i'm doing both at the same time um but agility season is really like it is the summer like you know it's getting earlier now like our first like we've already done a couple of winter shows but very rarely um yeah like it's more of a summer sport so it does work quite well in the sense of like we're not running canny cross unless we're getting up at five o'clock in the morning to run um so it's keeping up her fitness and yeah. also still her directional cues and things like that is all still getting worked and like her brain's still getting worked as well rather than just stopping completely because I think I'd end up with an absolutely stir crazy dog if I if I didn't do agility or something with her and just didn't run her at all over summer well we so. have such odd summers these days we do we do seem to we can get some running in uh, yeah. yeah I mean this summer I actually I'm I normally hate running in the summer I can't I normally end up stopping myself anyway but I think because my fr I've really got fr um, a really good friend now that I've met through Canny Crafts, and so she almost keeps me accountable. So yeah, through the summer we were like, right, we're gonna like run twice a week together, and because it was just such a horrible summer, we were actually able to get up and run. Uh, we were meeting at like five o'clock in the morning, but <laughs> we were out with the dogs before it got too humid. I can't. I don't know about you, but I. I mean, I know Michelle's not an early riser, and I'm better not than she is. But I five o'clock. It's just like I, I struggle with Louise's seven thirty a.m. Pilates class. So yeah, I'm not an early riser. <laughs> no, she is I getting to it. No way, I can't do it on my own. But if I know I'm meeting my friend, I'm like, yeah. I've said that I'm going to meet you, so I've got to do it. I've just got to, and I'll be sit, sitting there at, like in bed, like my alarm's going off. I'm like, just get out of bed. Like you could do this. You'll be fine as soon as you're out of bed. It's that first, like, getting out. That's the oh, well, I, at 6.30 when the alarm goes off, that's early enough for me, I'm afraid. Um, the dog, <laughs> dog can wait. <laughs> but I know a lot of people listening to this will be the early risers. Yeah. Michelle and I are not. We're, we'll do the podcast and talk about dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not getting up early to run with her. We, we just tend to run on rainy days or, yeah, or just keep it easy or just don't don't go out. So have you found though, but keeping you running, because I I've noticed this, and Michelle, so obviously Michelle's the running coach, and uh, she's got me training again, which I'm sort of getting into again. But but over the summer, she did keep me going, and um, even though we don't run together because we're nowhere near each other. But do you, do you find that that helped your canny cross? Because I've had a bit of a longer period because obviously people have puppies, so we didn't get back into it until the beginning, you know, the last month or so. But I've noticed that my fitness is actually fine yeah I mean there was a little bit of a dip but nothing like before when I would have completely stopped running I, I would have had to pretty much start from zero again um I'd be struggling to run 5k and I'd have to really be like right just slow it right back you can't run as fast as what you used to be able to <laughs> um but no I've really got I, I've hardly experienced a dip at all it was really quite impressive um you know, quite nice been, isn't it yeah, and I've been running, like, I think I did um, the Canix Y Forest the other weekend, and I'm pretty sure that was probably my fastest 5K that I've done ever, and that was quite some elevation. It was very, like, up and down. So I think that's really helped, like, continue to run throughout. It just keeps that kind of base fitness. Yeah. Even though we weren't doing a lot, we were still getting out there. No, I think it is. And Michelle's nodding her head. Yes, I am. It's, it's consistency. It's our key word of the year, isn't it? Consistency. Yeah. Consistency. Yeah. Uh, yes, Michelle, it is. 
<laughs> Keep it going with the Pilates now. No, that's brilliant. Excellent. Well, I, it sounds like you've got a lot of fun uh, with Tilly coming. Uh, Lily. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Do your research. Uh, Lily coming on board as well with uh, Canny Cross and obviously the agility. So you've got a knot to keep your hands full, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I like to keep busy. <laughs> we can see that. <laughs> Have you got anything else you'd like to ask, Michelle? Or um, No, not really. Just do you want to tell us where our, um, I was going to say readers then, where our <laughs> listeners can follow you and your adventures really and see how you get on at the Ultra? Yeah, so we're mainly on Instagram, so explorewithpause.uk. Um, we also have a little YouTube channel as well, which we put kind of agility stuff and canny cross stuff. So we'll do like race vlogs on there as well, kind of agility competition vlogs as well. So you can follow all of that. And that is Beth and the dogs on YouTube. Brilliant. So go, go and follow those. That's uh, that's good. And uh, I think I know why we're struggling, Michelle, because it's it, we're recording this in the evening and you and I are not used to it. <laughs> <laughs> but um no that's fine brilliant well thank you so much beth it's been a really interesting chat about you know the, especially the agility and the canny cross um together I and mean, we had our um chat with agility trainer sue from heron hounds but we hope that you've enjoyed this episode and we will see you on the next one enjoyed today's episode don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends and if you get a moment please leave us a review we'll see you next time on canny cross conversations thank you to our sponsor get stronger run faster 5k find out more about the course at the link in the show notes it's great for canny crossers and runners to improve their 5k time and keep up with the dogs And it will really help you to enjoy running more and avoid injury.